Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we are taking a look at a brand new knife that literally just dropped from Vosteed, and this one is quite the beast. What we have here is a brand new lock that is more along the lines of a button lock, but this is anything but your average button lock. This thing is an absolute vault lockup of a button lock, by far and away the most durable, strongest button lock I have come across yet. This knife has taken some brutal spine wax and passed the test of flying colors. And what we're talking about here is none other than the Vosteed and Kylo. Now, before I go any further into this review, I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor, hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this very impressive, very different EDC. We are looking at an overall length of 7.71 inches with a blade length right around 3.15 inches and a blade thickness at a slightly thicker than average 140 thousandths. We have LMAX for the blade steel and a blade style that is uh, kind of a mishmash of things. Uh, it's a sheep's footy reverse tanto-ish clip point. You, you tell me. I see a few different, uh, few different blade shapes here, but uh, whatever it is, it's amazing. I'm a big fan of this blade shape. I think it looks fantastic. Uh, we have a very nice flat grind with a handle length coming in at 4.56 inches. Uh, handle thickness at 550 thousandths. And a handle material that I believe, I am almost certain this is aluminum, but don't uh, take that with a grain of salt right now because as you saw, this is the prototype. Now this is the production approved prototype, so there's no, not gonna be any changes from what you're seeing here. Um, but I didn't get a spec sheet, so I'm going kind of off feel and how it looks and what I think, and I'm pretty sure this is aluminum. If it's not aluminum, I will of course specify somewhere in the description of the video, um, but there's also gonna be a link that's gonna take you over to Kickstarter, which is where this knife is gonna be available at. Um, that has a lot of information because there's this this area right here. There is a lot to learn about this area. Take a look at that. We're going to talk a lot more about that. Uh, but what this is is the locking mechanism, and this is the first knife featuring the V anchor. And yes, it is uh, anchor is a good a good description for this lock because. It is an absolute beast of a lock. Uh, user of a right hand only tip up carry. I don't know, there, there may be lefty options available on the Kickstarter, I don't know that. All I know is what I have in my hand and that is, this is obviously a right handed carry knife. Uh, a weight right around 4.9 ounces. I put it on my scale and I don't think it's completely accurate, but we're right around that 4.6 to 4.9 ounce range. Designed by Yu Dong. And we are looking at a price that, uh, to be totally honest, I don't know the exact price because I know there's going to be early bird specials on Kickstarter. So um, the, the actual retail price is going to be more than what you could get it at if you go help fund the Kickstarter to get the first batch of these knives. So, of course, all of the links will be below for the Kickstarter. Um, if I had to guess, you know what? I don't even want to guess. I, I'm willing to bet it's going to be under $200, probably pretty easily under $200 with the Kickstarter, but I don't know. Like, again, I'm, I'm kind of guessing I don't want to go too high or too low, um, but this definitely feels like a premium knife. And again, we're looking at LMAX here, so that's I still consider that a uh, pretty premium steel i love lmax so um not a cheap steel whatsoever and the lock of course the engineering and time that went in to develop this lock which is very very cool what we're actually going to do now is give the full review because like i said this is the prototype i've had this now for a couple weeks um i've carried this a lot uh really thoroughly enjoying it so we're going to do the full review and then we are going to open it up and take a look at just exactly how this lock works which I think everybody is going to enjoy. And I also have a flashlight here to get a little uh, couple glimpses in there while we're talking about it. So I'm gonna stop babbling. We're gonna take a look at some size comparisons and then we're gonna start talking all about this knife here, this Ankylo. I believe it's it's either Ankylo or Ankylo. Uh, Ankylo just sounds better, so we're going with that. Uh, size comparisons. Here we have the Vosteed Thornton 
And uh, let's pull out another Voss deed here that everyone probably knows more than the Thornton. I wish everybody knew the Thornton as much as this guy here, but this has been out a lot longer, and uh, it's still a fantastic knife, too. The Voss deed Raccoon. And as you can see, uh, pretty good size comparisons. The, uh, the Ankylo is a little longer, um, but I think that does a lot for everybody. I think that gives you a pretty good idea of the size of this knife. So this is, while it's close in length, the Ankylo is definitely a, a chunkier, beefier knife in the hand, which is a, not really a good thing or a bad thing. It's, it's whatever you prefer. If you want, like slimmer carries, then something like the Thornton or the Raccoon may be a little better for you. But I really like the way this Ankylo fits in hand. It actually kind of reminds me of this guy right here, the Spyderco Shaman. Not fully, but there's just little hints of the Ankylo that kind of remind me of the Shaman. Some of it is the Ergos, some of it's the blade, it's a little bit of the handle. There's a lot of little things that kind of play around that make me think of the Shaman when I have the Ankylo in hand. And also here is the Thunderbird. So there's your size comparisons. And uh, let's get to talking about this knife because there's a lot of really good things about it. I wouldn't call this like one of the best knives ever or anything like that. But there's a lot of really nice, good things about this knife that uh, that I've really, really enjoyed for the past couple weeks. Uh, and as always, it starts with the blade. Like I said before, I love Elmax. It's a great steel to sharpen. It's a great steel for edge retention, corrosion resistance, toughness, all the things. Elmax is a fantastic steel. Um, and the lines and the shape of the blade are very, very nice. You have a nice amount of belly. You have a pretty good tip for, I mean, we're not talking like, obviously it's not like a double-edged dagger where it's like piercing, uh, a piercing beast, but, uh, it has a nice tip up there. So you can do some decent little piercing. Um, it's a strong blade. And yeah, it's just a really, really good looking blade. I would consider this a pretty darn slicey blade too. We have a edge reading at 20 thousandths behind the edge and a pretty nice tall flat grind. So yeah, really, really nice geometry on just a great looking blade. And you have a thumb cut out there, there are a blade cut out. That is fantastic. Works really, really good for the middle finger flick. And of course you have your flipper as well as a front flipper. We have a lot more to talk about when we get to the action portion of this review because this is a fidget beast um, and it just feels like a beast in general. A lot of that uh, beastliness comes from the handle. The handle here is just an absolute tank. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this is aluminum here, but if you look on the inside, let's get that flashlight out and uh, crank it up a little. Okay, one one setting. Um, and we'll take a look in here. Uh, maybe that's too bright. That's a little better. Um, there are some steel liners on the inside that aren't really handle liners. They're actually parts of the lock, um, of the V anchor lock that go up in here. And let's see if we can, there. Okay, perfect. You can, this is a really bright light. I'm trying to kind of like dim it here. It's not working that well. That's just about, I think, as good as it's going to get. So as you can see, in there is your lockup. Now, whatever, if you don't think that is a solid lockup, I got news for you. You are very wrong. Um, the lockup on this knife is literally insane. I have spine whacked the hell out of this knife. And I'll do it one more time here. But I, so the spine wax I gave it off camera... I can't hold it like this because if I spine whack it hard enough, like I, I got it to the point to where if it ever did fail, like this was going to take a part of my hand off. So I'm going to kind of just hold it like this and just give it a really good. It, it, it just doesn't. I mean, it just doesn't fail. This thing is a beast solid lockup that is. It's by far and away the strongest lock I've handled. And the spine wax I've given this knife, I would not give a lot of other regular button locks that spine whack, that hard of a spine whack. Because I've given them spine wax and they hold up, but the, the, the strength and the force of the ones I've been giving this one, I just wouldn't feel safe doing it on other button locks. So this thing is a fantastic lock. By far and away, the strongest lock I've come across. Again, I don't have all the scientific data and numbers for you on that. 
I'm only going off how hard I beat this blade on the on hard surfaces, just like that. So I mean, it's yeah, it's awesome. Love the lockup on this. And we're going to take a deeper look at it here in just a second and uh, see just what is going on inside this handle. But we got to talk a little more about the handle because I really like what they did here. I love the the brass pivot collar there, or it's anodized. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's brass. I'm pretty sure it's just like anodized, like gold. But looks really, really good. Works great with this emerald green and the frag. I really like what they did with the frag here because they didn't cover the handle with it. You have it all basically kind of like where your palm is, and it kind of just stops and goes away as it goes up the handle. I like I like that. You don't see that a lot. I think it looks really good. Um, you have your standard Vostid clip here, which, you know, it works. Nothing real wrong with it. Uh, fully recessed, which is always nice. Carries great in the pocket. Um, you have a nice little lanyard hole back there with it also has kind of like that brass accent So it works really good with the pivot collar there. So in terms of colors and aesthetics, I feel like they nailed it um, I love this handle shape. It feels good um, And it looks good I think it pairs really perfectly well with the blade to be honest and when it comes to the ergos like I said before the ergos are very very good um, I think the ergos are very good borderline great the only I, I think if the scales were actually contoured that would make the ergos great but they are flat um and they feel really good like i said there's nothing bad about it um but i think contoured scales would have contoured handle would have been like perfect here but there's actually three grip positions so there's this grip position here which i think not most people would do if you have smaller hands you this could actually work really well for you um and then there's also the fully choked up grip here because there is a nice size finger choil up here that is full enough for i think most people's finger and I like that, but this area here is a little big, but they have jimping here on this area of the blade. And this, this is the grip for me. I, I really, really enjoy this grip here. Even though it's not like a full choil around it and all that good stuff, it still feels really good in my hand. Like it's just the flatness, I guess. The flatness of this area as well as the thickness of the handle it just works really, really well in my hand. So really, really enjoy the ergos on this guy. Um, and the only thing I enjoy more than the ergos and the overall aesthetics of the knife is the fidget factor. This is an extremely fidgety knife. Um, and there's not many knives out there that are this fidgety and, and this safe from a locking standpoint. I mean, yes, I do consider most button locks completely safe. I've had a couple button locks fail on me. I think probably all of us have. Um, and I know some people are totally past the button lock phase and are just, they just don't want to deal with them anymore. I, I get that too. But I, to me, this isn't really like a button lock. I mean, yes, it is, but it's, it's a completely different elevated, um, re-engineered button lock that is just extremely impressive and very, very fidget friendly. This also has a true detent. A true detent ball. And uh, you know what? I think I can show that in here. Let's see. Um, and I don't mean like a detent feel. I mean like there is a literal detent ball. Why is that not working? There we go. Other way. Okay. Um, <laughs> right? I think I can. Let's see here. Eh, eh, maybe not. There it is. You see that detent ball? Look uh, just... Just to the right of my thumb, there it, there it is right there. You can see kind of the, the roundness of it. Just to the right of my thumb, there is a full-size regular detent ball in there. And that makes for a fantastic detent. And you can also, so when you're going to open this, you can, um, you have the detent click. So just listen. That's the detent ball. And that's the lock. So there you go. The detent ball is definitely there. It feels like it's there. It's a great, great action. And it is a very, very satisfying fidgety action. The only issue, the only little minor issue I have with the deployment methods of this knife is the, the rear flipper. And while it works, and I mean it works really well, uh, but it, you can't really fail it. The only way you can fail this flipper is if you try and do a push button. Because the way this is all designed, if you just try and push it in, the front flipper, 
is going to hit your finger there. So when you when you use the rear flipper on this knife, it has to be a fully dedicated light switch flip. And again, I don't think that's going to be a problem for most people. Um, I do love a good push, push button where I can just kind of push it and let it fly out. But you can't do it with this knife. So that's the only minor drawback with the action of it. But the front flipper... The front flipper is fantastic. As you saw before, reach around approved. So all of the fidget options are there and it is just so enjoyable. So in terms of the typical review of this knife, um, it checks all the boxes. We have a nice size knife, a slicey blade, a great handle with an extremely strong lock that's very fidget friendly. And it is just an extremely enjoyable knife to deploy, fidget with, as well as use because you have a very slicey, strong, good-looking blade on the knife. Now, let's take this bad boy apart. And uh, we're going to do it with, uh, of course, the one and only Mega Pro Precision Driver. If you guys aren't using a Mega Pro Precision Driver, I have one question for you. What's wrong with you? This is, seriously, I think it is by far and away, for the money, the best precision driver out there. And it works great for your knives. Uh, it comes with the T8s and the T6s. And there are actually T8s and T6s on this guy right here. Uh, we have T6s up here on the V-anchor lock. And then T8s along the body. T6s on the screw. And T8s over here. So, let's get to disassembling. Now, I got to do the, this clip first. And I have... This is a T8 that I have on here. So, I'll put the T8 off to the side. And we'll just pop into this and grab my T6 right here. And as you can see, you have a nice cartridge that holds all your bits. Pops right back in and you're good to go. So let's get the T6 here, put that in and get to taking this guy apart. Now, I'm not going to put this back together on the camera just because we're already at 16 minutes. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are probably fast forwarding through certain parts of this. And I don't blame you. Uh, because that's why I don't do a lot of disassemblies is because they just take a long time. And uh, I kind of have a mouth of a sailor when I'm, taking a, when I'm taking a knife apart because if it doesn't go my way, I just have a lot of issues with that. Um, and I try to keep the channel mostly kid-friendly in case I got parents watching with their kids. So I don't want to start saying all the things taking a knife apart and having parents having to cover their kids' ears, you know. Try to be a gentleman. But uh, let's see here. Let's start taking this off here. We'll take these. I should have left that T6 on for a second. That's all right. Okay, let's start taking this off. And I, this is actually the first time I've disassembled it myself. So we're going we're gonna to find some things out together. So that is interesting. And uh, we'll see just what we have here. Uh, so I will say one thing I like about Vosti is their knives come apart very easy. They never put too much, too much, uh, Loctite or anything on there. I've never had that issue. And that's, that's always nice because it's a pain in the butt when I do have that issue. Um, let's get this off. Okay. Is that coming? Okay. There it goes. Whew. Right after I said something, I was like, man, that's on pretty tight, but it's coming off. Okay. There's that. And... Just trying really careful. Those T6s. I see why they use T6s here because obviously, you know, you have um, this area. T8s could just potentially be too big of screws for this area. So I get why they use T6s. T8s are just so much better. Oh, okay. There we go. Came right off. So let's take a look here. Now, first of all, before we dive into this, I also want to show you guys this. Because this right here is the actual V anchor plate that is on the side of the knife, right? Let's see something here. Um, yeah, it is right there. Yeah, yeah, crap. Okay, so this guy right here is that right there. So that's where this is sitting in the knife, just like that, all the way screwed in, boom, just like that. That's where it is. Um, and that's this part right here. Now, what you have here, it, first of all, it starts with this big, thick slab of steel. So that's what it starts like. And it comes down to this. Now, this little notch right here, see that little hole? That's where the actual detent ball is in there. And then this spot right here, this little square, that 
is what's locking into the knife right up there. Obviously, when the blade's deployed, this is facing down, and that little square is locking in there. That's what you saw when I had the flashlight on it. So now let's take a deeper look into here, and as you can see, when this is out and locked, let's move it into a locking position. There you go. So now you have a magnetic, let me get this picture over here. I tried printing it and it wasn't really the best print. Um, but so there's the V-anchor plate, which you know is right there. Um, and that V-anchor plate is going up against a magnetic connector, which is on the other side of the button. So this is the button right there. And um, that magnetic connector helps kind of pull everything together and add to the strength of that. So the V anchor plate up there is also pushing in and providing some of that awesome lockup that makes it extremely strong. So there is a lot of engineering going on in here. And you know what? I will just pop this off because I'm sure Vostid has such nice tolerances on their knives. Everything comes apart so easily. There's the internal milling there. And uh, let's see what we have. Oh. And um, you know what? Let's also take a look at these. I got these set off. They, they sent me some extra bearings to show you guys. I, I think, I don't know if extra bearings come with the knife or not. I honestly don't. It probably says in the description of the knife somewhere on Kickstarter. But look at these bearings. I mean, these things are huge. These kind of look, these are like the size, almost the size of like um, the, the washers on a Chris Reeve and Kosi. Like super, super wide. Um, obviously not washers. They are bearings. Um, but like four times, three or four times bigger than your average uh, bearing. So really, really cool there. And uh, I also see why this, uh, why this blade was so smooth. But yeah, as we can see there, there is a lot going on. But at the same time, while there's a lot going on, um, it's still also just, you know, a pretty, I mean, I don't want to say basic, but I mean, we're not exactly reinventing the wheel we're just making an extremely, extremely strong button lock there. So really, really cool. Actually, I think while I have this all apart, I'm probably just going to clean it because this, uh, this has some of that, that factory grease in there. So yeah, we'll give it a good cleaning and we'll get it put back together. But that is the inside of this guy. Um, it really, then this is where really all the magic is. The rest of this, I mean, the button just really pushes everything up that way. All of the lock, all of the strength is right what you see here. So um, yeah, really, really cool stuff from Vosti. This has been a very long video. Um, I hope <laughs> I hope it gave you guys a little more insight to this. Um, but I do think this is going to be an extremely popular knife this year, especially with the strength of this lock, the re-engineered button lock aspect to it, the fidget factor. It's everything that a lot of people are looking for. It's a really good looking knife. And while I don't know the exact price, like I said, it's linked below. I think everyone's going to be pretty darn satisfied with that price. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, there's probably more to come on this knife. Um, but that's all I got for you guys today. I would recommend it. I think it's an incredibly smart um, just really cool, intriguing design from a locking standpoint and from just a knife standpoint. It's a really good one. So let me know what you guys think of this. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. We went a lot longer than normal, but that is it. I'm done. I'm going to enjoy the rest of my weekend. I hope you guys do as well. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.